He's calling for the sinner. Take your time, man. And the backsliders oh, too. Thank you, Jesus. You ought to be glad. Yes, sir. He died for you. Oh, he yeah. died on the cross. Yes, sir. But now he is alive. And the hero yes, sir. to tell you for your sins he died. He said, Come to the water and stand by my side and drink from the fountain. You won't be denied. Yeah. I have seen every teardrop that fell from your eyes. And I rose to tell you, for your tears I die. He's calling Saint for the sick. Yes, he is. And he's calling. Good morning, and I take the opportunity to welcome you to come to the water, a life-changing, life-giving ministry of evangelization, bringing the good news of the gospel to everyone whom has an ear to hear, a heart to believe and receive. And I hope that this is you and I this morning for what? This is the day that the Lord has made, and what are we going to do? We are going to rejoice, and we are going to be glad. But truly, the joy of the Lord is our strength this morning. Thank you so much for allowing me to come into your home one more Sunday where we can praise the Lord, we can magnify his name, we can glorify his name, we can exalt the name of Jesus, we can lift him up. We want to let the whole world know about our Jesus. Amen. Oh, I tell you what, we just come from uh, Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday morning. Amen. And I tell you what, it should excite you as it excited me because our Savior lives. Amen. And he moves and he's got power. Amen. So I tell you what, the joy of the Lord really is our strength this morning because God has been our provider. God, he provided us with salvation. He provided us with healing. He provided us deliverance. He provided us to be set free in Jesus. Amen. And carried out by the power of the Holy Spirit. So this morning, you and I should be lacking nothing. Amen. As we come together to pray this morning, I'm all excited because you know what? God is on my side. So what can the enemy do to me? And what can the enemy do to you? Amen. So call somebody up and tell them that come to the water is on television right now. And they should be watching. Let us go to our father in prayer. Heavenly father, we just come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. Coming before you always in thanksgiving. Coming before you always in praise. This is the day that you have made. And regardless of what is going on with us this morning, you say rejoice and be glad in this day, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Thank you, O merciful God, that we're able to come over the airways this morning and we're able to start off somebody's day with the prayer meeting, Lord God, before they go to that church services. Today we come with thanksgiving. Thank you so much for waking us up this morning, clothed in our right minds. Thank you so much that as we slept last night and did not know nothing, you had your holy angels in charge, watching over us, Lord, ministering to us, Lord, keeping us from all evil, all harm, and all danger. And for that, we want to say thank you. And we thank you for the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Because of the finished work of Calvary, because we have become believers and not doubters, because we are your children, hallelujah, washed in the blood of the Lamb and filled with the Holy Ghost, we thank you for that power 
that resurrection power through, hallelujah, the Holy Spirit that is within us, upon us, and working through us, bringing us toward freedom. And for that, we want to say thank you. And we extend the invitation to everyone, Father, to pray with us that that power and that presence would be activated in their lives, Father, beginning this moment right now. Father, we pray for an anointing of the Holy Ghost right now to fall afresh upon each and every one that is watching. In each and every home, Lord God, homes may be going through difficulties. Homes may have the joy of the Lord, but may the difficulties, Lord God, through all of the difficulties, may they perceive and may they feel and may they know for themselves that you are there with them, leading them and guiding them to greener pastures. So it is today that we are so thankful it is today, Lord God, that we can rejoice in you. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. We just want to thank you and praise you. Remember the United States of America, Lord. Remember Russia and remember Ukraine, Father. Remember the state of Louisiana, Lord God. Remember those who are sick today, Father. Remember those who are incarcerated today, Lord. Remember those who do not believe in you. As we stand and we pray, Father, Believing by faith that our prayers, Lord God, will reach wherever it is that it is sent. And Father, we pray for everyone who is watching today, that Father, their day today is going to be a day like never before. That Father, the peace that surpasses all understanding can rest, rule, and abide with each and every one. Lord God, as we pray for one another, it's all about you, Father, and not about us. We're asking for the manifestation of your presence. We're asking for your glory to come, O oh God, and touch each and every heart that is watching this morning. We want to thank you and we want to praise you. As we come in the authority of the name of Jesus and we bind Satan and all the evil spirit that has an assignment, maybe against this ministry or against anyone who's watching this morning, in the name of Jesus, we bind, we render powerless by the power of the blood of Jesus. We enforce the cross of Christ upon all evil powers in the name of Jesus. And we're asking for the release of the Holy Spirit of God. Confidence, Lord God. Encouragement, Lord God. That as we step out in faith, we do not step out by ourselves. That you are here to guide us. You are here to lead us. You are here to give us the words to be able to minister your word to everyone that is listening. Just want to thank you and praise you for it. And we call it done. And it is in the name of Jesus that we pray. And let the church say what? Amen, amen, and amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and we're going to be glad. And I tell you what, let us watch the video and I shall be right back. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
and let it be pleasing, Lord, to Thee. And should I gain any praise, let it go to Calvary. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory for the things He has done. To that you enjoyed the video as much as we enjoy presenting it to you. For to God be the glory. And it is sung or sang by Jacqueline Day, my niece. And I tell you what, God has been good to her. Oh, she's got the voice of an angel. Hallelujah. And she can bring that song, For God be the glory, to discomfort hearts in these difficult times. But it's also a glorious time where you and I can come together and allow the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to roll on to the next person that we meet. So it's a good time for the children of the Most High God with the war that is happening with Russia and Ukraine, with all the difficulties that we are having in the United States of America. We've got tracas here, I'll tell you what, that is very serious as what's going on in Russia and Ukraine. And we ought to get a hold on it before the bombs start falling here. We ought to stand strong, stand strong as a nation, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We ought to be a nation that God has used for so many years as a nation that is under his rule. We have to get back if we fall into the side. We need to get back in unity. We need to bring love back. We need to get rid of a lot of things that we are doing that is not of God. We need a self-examination as a nation and as a people. And I'll tell you what, when we do that and we call for God's mercy, His mercy is always upon us. His mercy is always there. But when we begin to make changes, we begin to call upon Him again again and not throw him out how are you going to throw a heavenly father out how are you going to do that the one that knows all does all sees all lord we just call you back we come with a repented heart as a nation believing that when we cry out to you that father you make haste to see about us we thank you for your patience we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. And as your children stand, proclaim and declare the gospel. We are believing it by faith for your supernatural divine protection. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And let the church say what? Amen, amen, and amen. All right. First, uh, I'd like to share with you this morning is a teaching that uh, I was uh, in and... Um, it's a teaching that I want to share with you, and um, it's talking about the cross, which is the heart of Christianity. Amen? And I'm going to be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, and I'll share with you what I heard the minister say, and I wrote it down, and I'm going to share it with you so that our lives can be enriched about what happened with Jesus, him being crucified. Amen? 
I know that it is just a, a reminder and a refresher. But the more that we talk about it, the more that we ponder, the more that we meditate, the stronger you and I get on the reason for the cross of Christ. Amen? For the reason for the cross of Christ. Okay, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verse number 1. And it says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, and this was Paul speaking, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom declaring to you the testimony of God. You see, I'm just like Paul. <laughs> I don't have the excellence of speech. Amen. I don't have no big fancy words to tell you what Jesus has done for me and what he can do for you. God has so called me to break down things down to where a baby could understand. So like that, the gospel is not going to be something that is so hard we don't know and we can't understand. We've got the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost. The power and the presence of the Holy Ghost. we got the teacher, the Holy Spirit, that will reveal to us the Word of God and make it real in our own lives. He says, I'll say it again, and I, brethren, did not come to you with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. Paul went through it. And you know what? We are going to go through it also. But I'm so glad we know Jesus in the pardon of our sins. I'm so glad that we know that God loved the world so much that he gave us his only begotten son, that whomever would believe upon him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And I can personalize this and say, for God so loved me that he gave me his only begotten son, that if I would believe upon him, I will not perish, but I will have everlasting life. You try it, and you're going to see that it works. You have been attached to the great I am, Jesus Christ, son of the living God. When he sent Moses to Pharaoh, and Moses said, well, who do I say sent me here? And he said, I am. And when Jesus came on the scene, I am a child of God. I am blessed in the city. I am blessed in the country. I am the head and not the tail. I am the above and not the beneath. I am more than a conqueror, but I am an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. You see, you attach yourself and you begin to declare who you are in Christ Jesus. When the enemy comes against you, I am a child of the Most High God. He also said, when the Mary, the Blessed Mother, and Joseph went looking to him because he was lost for three days. He had gone back to Jerusalem. He stayed away from them for three days, and they were frantic. And what did he say? I must be about the business of my father. So not only are you and I am, but you are, I must. I am a child of God. I must be about God's business. And when the enemy comes, but to kill, to steal, and to destroy, and you begin to hit him with the word of God. See, Jesus had to hit him with the word of God. It is written. It is written. It is written. And what did Satan have to do? He had to go away. He's a defeated foe. Do not allow him to try to shake you and move you. In Christ, you are immovable. And unshakable. Yes, we are going to have troubles. Yes, we're going to have tracas and misas. Yes, we're going to have all these things coming up again. Wars and rumors of wars. We're going to have all of that. But Christ has got me. Christ has got you. So therefore, the way maker will make a way. And he will keep his promise. Amen. He will keep his promise. So uh, let not your heart be troubled this morning nor let it be afraid. Amen. Go to the word of God.
find out what you and I have in this love letter that was written to you and to me. Open it up. Begin to read it. Well, some people say, I don't understand it. Well, I tell you what. Come to know Jesus. Ask him for the power of the Holy Ghost. Ask him to, to, that the Holy Spirit would teach you all things the way that Jesus said it would happen. And you will begin to understand what thus says the Lord. You won't need anyone to feed you. You will be feeding yourself, yourself. Amen. Yes, we have to listen and we have to go out and we have teachers and preachers and we have all kinds of information at our hands to help us. We know that everyone was not born with a Bible in their hands, but we have everything we need. Hallelujah. And that is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We have the Word of God. We have this letter. We have scripture. We have churches. We have prayer meetings. Everything we need to be able to make it on through. So there is no excuse as we get into that Word. Let that Word get in us. This is our Facebook. Let's face ourselves in this book. And let's let this book face us. And you're going to see the changes because I know it has changed my life. It has revolutionized my life. So therefore, if it has done it for me, it can do it for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He says, uh, I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. The demonstration of the spirit and of power. Get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Ask Jesus to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. And I promise you, there will be a demonstration of the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost in your life. Amen? Because I believe that it is in my life. I believe that. For I am a child of the Most High God. Amen? Hallelujah. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. In the power of God. There's power in that name. Amen? All right. Well, I'm going to share what it is that I, I got out of my uh, Bible study. It says the cross has become the symbol of Christianity. The crucifixion of Christ is a central doctrine of our faith. And understanding it correctly is essential for eternal life. You see, Paul was convinced the cross was the most vital subject he could address. And I want to pass this on to you because it's a vital subject. We don't get that right. We're not going to get nothing else right. <laughs> so let us get the cross. Let us get that right. Why Jesus came for you, for you and for me. What happened on Calvary. What you are entitled to. The price he paid for all of mankind, everybody ever to be born, the price that was paid. So therefore, you and I can live in this world that is full of traca and misère, under the power and the presence and the anointing of the Holy Ghost because of the finished work of Calvary, because of the blood of Jesus that has washed us, cleansed us, healed us, saved us, delivered us, and set us free. We're in a spiritual war. And our weapons are not carnal. But they are mighty in pulling down the strongholds that Satan would want to keep you in. And the bondages he would want to keep me in. It is important for us as believers to understand what happened on the cross. Then we too can be thoroughly convinced of its supreme significance, it says. It is not sim simply the execution of a Jewish man. What transpired in that event was the solution to mankind's biggest problem. Do you know what mankind's biggest problem is? That three-letter word, sin. Trakamize, all kinds of stuff, sin. <laughs> and our resulting alienation from God. Because of sin, we have been separated from God. But I tell you what, the reconciler has come. Jesus, Son of the living God, has come to reconcile you and to reconcile me to this holy God and gave us the power of the Holy Ghost 
to be able to live that life. So if you're hooked up in darkness, you don't need to be hooked up in darkness. Come out of darkness into God's marvelous light. Amen. You got that invitation this morning. I'm excited this morning because I'm being used as an instrument to invite you to come to Jesus. While wow, you and I still have time. I done made that over 30 years ago. Didn't know what I was doing, <laughs> but I knew I needed to do it. But I tell you what, since then he has added on to my life. He has taken things away from my life that I didn't need. He has been glorified in my life. And I pray that he continues to allow the life-giving water that he has given me to flow through me so that it can get to everyone out there who is watching. Sin, mankind's biggest problem. The crucifixion is the divine transaction that saves us. Only the blood of Jesus can cleanse us from sin and reconcile us to the Father. Although the Jews and the Romans viewed the crucifixion as the execution of a criminal, God saw the death of his son as a perfect atoning sacrifice which allowed for the justification of sinful mankind. Oh, I tell you what, my brothers and sisters, I can't say it enough. I cannot say it enough. Get, come to know Jesus in the pardon of your sin. Get into the word of God. Begin to read your love letter. Begin to experiment with God's love. There is none like it. No man, no woman, none can love like God can love and to bring peace in our lives. I had another... Um, portion of the Bible that I wanted to, to uh, share with you, but I don't have time to do it because I talk a lot sometimes. And I want you to go and read it for yourself. It's Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Read it for yourself and see how it is. And next time I come, I'll show you, I'll bring back to you what it is that I needed to teach on that one also. Until next month. Know that I love you with the love of Jesus in my heart. May the Lord bless you real good is my prayer for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. May the Lord bless you real good. May the Lord bless you real good. Won't be up this morning.